And, you know, you work and live in South Asia, um, and I work uh, in South Asia, and this is a region where many groups are left Indian, behind. Indians are feeling very insulted, you're not referring to it as South India <laughs> Well, that's another conversation about, <laughs> about the continent. But uh, my, quest my, my question is that, you know, we firmly believe that you can't have development unless development actually reaches everybody, that it is development for women and girls, it's development for people of tribes and ethnic groups that are often left behind or marginalized. It's for people of all backgrounds, regardless of their religion, their caste, um, their ethnicity, and so on. So, and this is, a, this is a constant challenge in development, is how we actually ensure that development reaches all of these groups who have been shut out of economic and social opportunity and, and who are unable to seize opportunity on the same terms. What's your thinking on this challenge? See, by law, everybody is equal, at least in India. No, there are countries where by law you're not equal, especially genders are not equal. In India, by law you're equal, but by practice it's still not. These are a thousand-year-old problems, they don't get solved overnight. A sustained push has to happen. The problem is of many levels. One thing is the democratic process itself addresses people as religious groups, caste groups, because that is the way to get a bunch of votes. So every election, if you have forgotten your caste or religion, when the election comes, they're going to remind you who you are <laughs> I'm saying, that's a reality in which you live. In case you forgot what is your caste and religion, when the election comes, they're clearly reminding you because uh, people have understood the technology of manipulating democracy, the science of how to manipulate democracy. People have understood this number game, how to add up the numbers, it is no more about a big pitch for… to where to take the nation, everybody has understood the science of winning an election, which I think is very dangerous and which I think is one of the most divisive forces that are happening in… in India at least. Otherwise, generally on a day-to-day -day basis, most people don't know what is their caste. Only when they want to get married, they check a little bit. Otherwise, generally they don't know what is their caste, it's not… you're not reminded of that on a daily basis. But when the election comes, you won't be spared, you will be reminded <laughs> So, some fundamentals have to change, though by law it is all equal, in practice there is a difficulty. Definitely we've moved a long way, we've come a long way in the last twenty-five years, a big change has happened. Th those divisions are much less. There are more girls in school today than ever before. Probably there are more girls in school than boys in most of the villages, it is true. Where we are running schools in southern India, generally sixty percent of the students are girls, forty percent are boys because boys like to do other things than studying. They don't always come to the school, but the girls come straight to the school <laughs> So there is a certain a natural studiousness about them or they have figured it out, unless they get educated, they're just going to be rubbished around here and there. They clearly understand that, boys still don't get it <laughs> and probably for them somehow they manage something around. So, how to level this is once again, is a question of the consciousness of the leadership. When I say leadership, it's not just a question of prime minister, chief minister like this, a leadership, the tiers of leadership which are down, they are not in the same mindset. The prime minister may be having a certain thought, the next level of the chief minister's thought is totally different. Down the line to the bottom most leadership which is panchayat is another world by itself. So this disconnect is there. I think right now a serious effort is being made to get everybody 
on the same pitch with the Prime Minister's uh, vision for the country, a pitch is being made. But being a democracy, election always around the corner, everybody misunderstands this is a political intent. Uh, you don't know whether to make out it… make out of it as a genuine intent or a political intent to win the next election. I feel in a country like India, this may be, uh, create lots of trouble for me, but <laughs> let me say it, in a country like India, I think we must uh, skip one election, that is not every five years, every ten years, give them ten years to create something. Because in a nation like India, with the kind of diversity and complexities we have, I think any political leader, to have any fair shot at creating something, he needs at least eight to ten years run. But the fear is always if somebody becomes corrupt, somebody becomes a despot, then you end up for ten years, what to do with him? So these problems are there, but these are intrinsic problems to a democratic society. But all said and done, in terms of eliminating caste, creed, religious bias, gender bias, the movement is tremendous. What has happened in the last five years itself is quite tremendous. On the ground is a huge change. But still, if you don't change rapidly enough, one generation's life may pass, that is the concern.